Hey guys, welcome to game three between Masuchi and Dulife. We're going to see who advances to the winner's bracket and move, moves on to the loser's bracket to meet Fisheye. Upper right in corner, we have Dulife starting as the, what I call that, like marine green? Sea green? Sea green, that's the word, I'm <laughs> marine green. I'm gonna call it marine green just to be thematic with Terran. Bottom left in corner, we have Masuchi starting as the red Zerg. This is going to be on good night, I believe. Yeah, this is on good night. More macro-oriented map. I'm wondering if Dulife is going to opt for that mech strategy once again. Paid off for him previous match. Masuchi's showing that he knows how to handle mech play. By the way, for my own reference, this is BSL Season 13 Hasu League Group D. Final match between Masuchi and Dulife. Masuchi moving that overlord to that bottom right-hand corner. Again, no front door seal. We're just going to see that supply depot. Interior of the base for Dulife. And I'm also wondering, with Masuchi seeing some windows early, because it feels like Dulife, at least in game one, had a bit of a scramble to catch up with Ma Masuchi's timing here and there. Maybe because of, I don't, I'm not sure, tournament nerves, being frazzled, not getting the scout. Currently, we are seeing some form of overpool or overlord build. I'm almost anticipating an overpool. Looks like we're in fact going to see a 12th hatch from Masuchi. Barracks alongside. So he's going to go for the more economic play. And we are in fact, it looks like setting up to see mech once again from do life. Now the question is, is what does Masuchi do to adjust? One thing I have seen Zerg do, I think all too often is Kind of over committing to that mutilus harass and under committing to really focusing on their macro to make sure that they have that army and also not being in position to really pounce on that army when it's kind of a out in open field scv scout making its way to the bottom right drone making its way to the upper left extractor i think that was around the two minute mark and a spawning pool alongside as well first marine in production with the cross spawns, the lack of scout, I don't think we're going to see a repeat of the Zerglings this time around. So I'm interested to see how Dulife executes when he is unmolested here in the early game. In fact, he might even be able to take out this early drone scout to go ahead and put his opponent in the red. It's going to come down to Marine Micro. And considering in game two, Masuchi yeah, had more trouble with this. That would have been devastating. So going up, he does see the factory. The Marines now going up to try to deal with this. Four Zerglings being produced to deal with a potential SCV scout. But Dulife, it looks like he scouted bottom right and then went caddy corner to upper left. So he's not getting the scouting information he was looking for either. And the drone able to sneak out of the base somehow. Kind of like speed. Like Roadrunner. I wanted to say speedrunner there for a second. Is this a second SCV? So it looks like a second SCV has been sent out. I'm curious if this was a mistake or just, what's going on here with this. So still no scout, but honestly, do life with his build up, uh, as long as he's not getting link flooded here, he's got all the information he's looking for. Drop that command center, and he's going to be able to get that scouting information with this vulture as it moves Caddy Corner across map. Sunken Colony being plopped down. Masuchi saturating that natural expansion. And has that layer up. And again, Armory in production. I do believe this time around, Do Life should be in a much better position because he's just, uh, outside of having these multiple scouting SCV out of position, which slowed his economy down a little bit, but nothing like having all those Zerglings in his base previously. Vulture actually wandering in, gonna get a Zergling kill. It's gonna get taken out really rapidly. Oof, that hurts actually. So that opens up the map for Masuchi to potentially threaten this front door. Second Vulture moving out, potentially deal with those Zerglings midfield. Machine shop being plopped down. Natural expansion is up. Or will be up in just a second. And Masuchi dancing with a lack of vision here to make do life's life a little bit more challenging. The Zerglings getting some free hits as a result. Looks like they are going to be wiped out otherwise, but getting some peck damage. 
the midst of this spire halfway finished in the main armor one immediately being upgraded and the first few goliaths are taking the field two marines here and it looks like do life setting up to go ahead and grab a much more rapid third factory but oftentimes earlier hydralis den here from misuchi oftentimes just having this vulture threat on the field that delays taking an additional third because the drone has to get there the vulture can intercept and sometimes what you'll see the hydralis do is or the mutalis do is, is they just have to play let's hunt the vulture first to get that economy rolling engineering bay being built do life up two workers so now it's going to be a battle of macro and in game two do life won that fight currently up to 44 supply 44 out of 44 common block point briefly with that blockade masuchi building his initial mutalisks charm boosters will be upgraded to help deal with this we already have the four Goliaths, and I believe we're going to have the, uh, basically, I think, six, potentially seven Goliaths, plus the turrets to deal with any potential Mutalist Karask. And really, I feel like, yeah, these Mutalists need to focus on hunting down this Vulture to open up a third base, immediately finding it. Vulture not long for life. And the drone immediately heading out to that six o'clock location. Third factory, plop down. Engineering Bay floating forward to go ahead and do some scouting. So maybe Masuchi can get some sort of damage done here. He is upgrading level 1 weapons on the Mutalisks once again. But keep in mind, that's I feel like this was his downfall in the previous matches. He's still sitting at 23 drones. And honestly, I, I feel where, where Zerg have a little bit more success is where they kind of maybe skip the standard mutilus harass and get a little bit more drone heavy at this stage pretty good saturation at that natural expansion third base is going to be a ways off but now he needs to yeah find that balance to pump get those units out evolution chamber in the back corner decent sim city just in case some additional vultures are going to sneak by hydralisk movement speed being upgraded the glyce fanning out to the north Engineering Bay doing its job spotting, and yeah, the Hydro is not getting anything accomplished. So third base is going to come online, but we already have nearly a full control group of Goliaths out on the field. It is going to be momentary, uh, just a moment before they're there. Level 1 armor is online. Do life. A little bit delayed in upgrading the level 1 weapons. But yeah, I feel like Masuchi, he's way behind as far as his economy goes he's got 25 drones compared to the 43 he really hasn't been pumping units in the midst of this i think yeah he's over focused on the mutilus caress do life taking his time keeping the goliaths actually really well fanned out to engage this attack force another mutilus down and i don't even think the mutilisks got shots off so masuchi now trying to filter in more mutilisks he wants to again get it done i, I believe with just mutilisks i don't see any hydralisks in production just yet. Do life piling additional Goliaths forward. Now with the three factories, he can rely on that plus turrets to kind of reinforce. Another Marine has been picked off. Not able to get an SCV and losing yet another Mutalisk. Trying to grab a fourth hatchery to potentially make up the difference. Six o'clock base, decently saturated. Nine Mutalisks floating around. It looks like another grouping. And I think Masuchi just might be uh, being overly aggressive at this stage. Yeah, needs to macro up, kind of ignore the Mutalisk threat and play from there. Five hatcheries being plopped down. I should say a fourth and a fifth hatchery being plopped down. It looks like those are going to be delayed. One thing Masuchi doing a good job of is these Mutalisks are forcing these Goliaths back because they are not super mobile, but this is turning into a trap. You can see Goliaths peeling off to the north. They want to catch these Mutalisks as they're coming across and are able to do so and get a barrage, picking off one there. But critically, Masuchi finding time to continue to build additional Hydralisks in the midst of this. And he might have a sufficient army at this stage if he can 
group it together and engage. Second control group of Goliaths going up to greet. However, the Mulists are just getting pummeled. They need to preserve health. So we've Hydralisks starting to filter in. The Goliaths going ahead and popping up and checking that 9 o'clock base momentarily. They're going to be able to get a free Overlord potentially. But this is just time that he's giving to his Zerg opponent to macro up. Currently has overall macro lead. Engaging before level 1 weapons is done from dual life. The Hydralis, this is a much better engagement situation for Masuchi. If he can just focus fire. Second grouping of Hydralis grouping up. The Mutalis attacking overhead. You can see where the split fire is happening. The Goliath retreating to the high ground. There's the misfire shot there. Some Hydra... Oh, unfortunately... Is, I'm not sure if that was an intentional peel-off or not. If there's just attack move off location, this might be intentional from Masuchi to go ahead and do a split attack. He feels like he has sufficient army to punch through. So you're now regrouping. No, I think that was just, yeah, a misguided move. And do life losing the Goliaths on retreat. Now all of a sudden, Masuchi with a death grip of an army can just pummel this natural expansion. Are there siege tanks? There's a single siege tank moving out. I don't know that it has siege checked yet. But I do not believe this is going to be sufficient to stem the tide. Masushi moving in, focusing that siege tank down very rapidly. More Goliaths grouping up. Keep in mind, this is five factories worth of production, so it's not over yet. And it's going to be close location. The Hydralists are stemming forward, so Masushi wants to win this here. The Hydralists are able to get up on the high ground. A siege tank has been produced, so that Dulife needs to be very careful microing this to win this fight so he can get purchased back on that natural expansion. Buy himself some time. Hold that ramp. And Masuchi now backing off, and we have a match. The Hydralis still trying to pressure that natural, but not a great situation for Dulife. Dulife expended a lot of troops. More Hydralis pressing forward for Masuchi, doing a good job macroing behind this. And he's just going to keep that Goliath count small, doing exactly what he needs to do. Yeah, don't let it get large. Don't let it become the big, powerful, overwhelming force. Siege tank... Morphing, it looks like it is picked off with two volleys of Hydralis Fire level 1 weapons kicking in for Masuchi. And Masuchi now has the high ground. That is going to be GG. Masuchi recovering after game 2. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Masuchi moving on to the winner's bracket. Do life moving to the loser's bracket. Where he's going to have a tough match versus Fisheye. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Thanks for listening.